Hello YouTubers, let's take a road trip where I'm going to take you to a location near LaSalle, Illinois where an abduction of a young college student took place. Her remains ended up 500 miles south from where she was last seen 10 days later in Missouri. She was raped and stabbed to death. There are several suspects, mostly truckers, that could have been responsible for her death. But to this day, no arrests have been made. It remains a cold case. I am driving westbound on Interstate 80 on my way to Star Rock State Park about 100 miles west of Chicago. And here's a spot on I-80 where 21-year-old Tammy Jo Tywicki was last seen alive on a hot August day in 1992. I'm sure y'all have heard about Tammy Saiwiki. She was an upbeat, talented athlete and college student, hoping to become a professional photographer, and it was all taken away from her when her car broke down on this highway, where she was abducted by a still unidentified so-called Good Samaritan. Tammy was born in Pennsylvania in 1971 and was a senior at Grenell College in Iowa. She spent the summer of 1992 with family and friends in New Jersey and Pittsburgh and was planning to head back to college in late August. So on a Sunday, August 23, 1992, Tammy Jo Sawicki said goodbye to her younger brother Darren at Northwestern University in Evanston, Illinois and sat up for Grenell College hoping to arrive at night. Tammy was driving a white 1985 Pontiac T-1000 with New Jersey license plate. The car overheated on the way to Evanston to drop off her brother Darren. The car was temporarily fixed by Darren and it ran okay on that Sunday morning. Darren begged Tammy to immediately drive to a safe area to let the car cool down if it overheats again. And she obliged. It was a 5 hour drive from Evanston to Grenell, Iowa and she drove with no issues at first, even picking up food from Hardee's. As expected, the Pontiac started overheating at around 2.30 to 3 p.m. in the afternoon and she had no choice but to stop here on marker 83 on I-80. As you can see, this is not a place to get stranded, especially if you are a young, attractive blonde woman a dangerous location for anyone. The nearest town was North Utica which was about 5 miles away and she could have walked there if she needed to for help. Between 3 to 4 p.m. at least 25 witnesses have reported her standing on the side of this highway with the hood of her Pontiac open. Witnesses also spotted vehicles stopping to help her including a beat up green pickup truck and a semi with striped brownish orange markings. At about 5 p.m., a state trooper found her car locked and abandoned. Thinking the person left to get help and was coming back, the trooper left the car as is. The next day, the car was ticketed and impounded at the local police station. When night approached, Tammy's concerned parents hadn't received a call from her for quite a while. Worried that something happened to her, they started contacting her friends and the authorities to help find her. Once Tammy's father, Henry Sewicki, traced her car at the LaSalle police station, Tammy's family and friends quickly came together to help search for her. They went on live TV. A search party was formed. Friends drove to areas where she might have stopped, hoping to find her there, but she was nowhere to be found. On September 1, 1992, a trucker pulled over at the side of Highway 44 in southwestern Missouri between Springfield and Joplin. He was going to cover up some tools to protect it from the rain when he noticed a horrible smell coming from the field. It was the smell of death. He walked towards it and with horror he saw a reddish blanket with duct tape around it. Flies and bugs were swarming over it and the way the blanket was shaped it was it did not look like an animal was inside. He didn't dare to open to see what was inside. He knew. So he called police. When the police arrived and opened the blanket, they found a decomposed body of a petite blonde female. Autopsy reports indicated she was sexually assaulted and stabbed eight times. 
once in her arm and seven times in a circle around her heart. She died from internal bleeding. Also, some of her personal items were gone. A soccer club patch that was cut out of her jeans, possibly by the killer to keep as a souvenir. Also missing were a prized Canon 35mm camera and a Loris brand wristwatch with a green umbrella on its face and a green band. The watch played a song, Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head. For three decades, police have been hunting for answers about who kidnapped, raped, and killed Tammy and dumped her remains 500 miles south from where she was last seen. Over the years, authorities pursued many leads in interviewing truckers and drivers who traveled through the area. In January 1993, an unnamed witness placed a call to the task force stating she'd seen Zawicki pull to the side of the road and that a white male between 35 and 40 years old over six feet tall with dark bushy hair was seen with Zawicki helping her with her car. He was the trucker driving the tractor trailer with a brown or orange diagonal stripes on the body. He is not a suspect at this case since no one saw him force Tammy to his truck but police would like to question him. So far there were three possible suspects that might have been involved in her death and they are all truck drivers. The number one suspect is lifelong criminal Lonnie Berbold who died in 2002. Serial killers Bruce Mendenhall and Clark Perry Baldwin. Mendenhall and Baldwin are currently in prison for sexually assaulting and murdering young women while on the road. Lonnie Beerbutt seemed to be the most likely suspect since his trucking route was close to where Tammy was abducted and he lived in Missouri close to where her body was found. All three suspects have been eliminated because of lack of evidence. I am sure whoever did this to her left their DNA on her body and as soon as they get a match, we may have an arrest soon, that is, if the culprit is still alive. It will be exactly 30 years on August 23, 2022 since she was abducted on this highway. So if anyone knows anything about a trucker or a good Samaritan that spoke of kidnapping a young woman and then killing her, Police reported to the police immediately. Killers like to brag. There is a $100,000 reward if the police get a conviction. It's been too long and her family needs closure. Tammy's dad, Hank, died in 2015 without ever knowing who did this to his only daughter. And Tammy's mother and brothers are still alive. And he spent their entire lives trying to get answers. It takes just one individual to solve this case. Could that person be you?